Our clothes as a mirror reflect the history of civilization. It is more than a second layer, as nowadays, fashion and style became the way of self-expression. Seeing deep symbolism in surrounding material things, speaking via things and rituals is absolutely in Kazakh style. That is why the history of national costume is an incredible world exposing our mentality. Today's program, Ornament, Patterns of Our World, Embroidery, the Ability to Create Beauty, Kura Korpe in Step with the World Trends, One of the main elements of decoration in the national costume are ornaments, curly, weaving, creating the illusion of infinity. Chop geometric or figured ornaments are an integral part of Kazakh life. We see ornaments not only on home textiles or on interior items, but also more often on traditional clothes. The ability to read ornament, to recognize its sacred meaning, the ability to embroider and know the technique of patchwork was a must know for all great great grandmothers. Why was it so important for them? And do these notions fit into modern fashion? As we see, ornament frequently appears in the collections of designers worldwide. The pattern, interpreted in a modern way, together with sequins, rhinestones, and other decor items appear almost every year in one version or another. It is modern, fresh, and relevant. Moreover, our ancestors also wore ornamentally decorated clothes, but they did not just have aesthetic purposes. From the ancient times, our ancestors learned to convey their idea of the universe and beauty through objects and decor. Scientists and art historians try to decipher patterns to understand the secret meaning of signs and symbols. Until now, it is believed that the key to understanding is lost, and nevertheless, interest in this art is still strong. Many ornamental motives are passed down from generation to generation, remaining almost unchanged for centuries. Ancient petroglyphs can be called a prototype of ornament. Initially, they depicted only the hunt of people. Cave people laid the foundation for ornament art by embedding patterns on the stones. Further, when depicting geometric figures, varieties of ornaments increased. As the art critic and scientist V. Chepelev put it, Kazakh seemed to live in the world of patterns and ornaments. Kazakh ornament is not just a decorative design, it has a deep philosophical meaning, a certain system of coded signs. Messages can be read everywhere, on patterns on doors, on felt, on a wooden truck, a leather vessel for kumas fermented dairy product traditionally made from mare's milk, and even on a boot. It is believed that the ornament is a kind of cultural code of the nation, in which the language of symbols is laid. From the very beginning, it was inherited to one particular nation of a particular culture, the specific ethno. Moreover, we can say that they are reflected in the ornament and in its specific elements. Each nation, depending on the era, creates its own unique ornamental style. Peculiarity, the national color allows us accurately determine its belonging to a particular group. There are many different classifications of ornaments. By the nature of the motives, we distinguish geometric, plant, zoomorphic, and anthropomorphic, as well as their combinations. Up to now, more than 230 types of national ornaments have been preserved, and each of them have a sacred philosophical meaning. The most common out of them is mutton horn, Kashkar Muiz. Mutton horn, Kashkar Muiz, the most common symbol. However, at the same time, in addition to the image of a particular object, it still has a cosmogony sound. The motive of the spiral, the motive of infinity, the motive of movement, the changes of seasons, a spirally twisted symbol. One sheep was specially fattened and tied next to the yurta, Kazakh home. When visitors came, their attention was focused on this animal. By the way, the more often people say, 
Oh, what a fat sheep. The more fat it gets. However, it is different with people, as it was considered that people could be jinxed. This is the origin of the use of the ornament mutton horn as an amulet. It is difficult to imagine the clothes of a nomad without ornamentation. Whether it is a headdress, a camisole, pants, or even shoes, everything was decorated very richly and variously, but in no way chaotic. Kazakhs had a clear division of the universe into the upper, middle, and lower worlds. The ornaments associated with them were used strictly for their intended purpose. The pattern for the hat could not appear on the boots. Everything had its place. For example, on outer clothing, girls' dresses were decorated with ornaments in the form of flowers or swallows. On the boys' clothes, ornaments in the form of a tip of an arrow, an eagle, a mutton horn. There were different types of ornaments for the headwear, for a waistcoat, for a camisole, and even for shoes. And it is very important to use them for their intended purpose. Sometimes, for example, headdress pattern is incorrectly used on shoes. Each pattern has its own purpose, and it is important not to mix ornaments. On the complex ornaments that run along the edge of Japan's robe, along the hem of the sleeves of dresses and along the neckline, we can observe the elements of zoomorphic ornament in the form of a mutton horn and at the same time of vegetative ornament. Vegetative ornaments can be in the form of stems, plants, images of flowers, tulips. However, everything is very stylized. No literal image. Ornament was applied in several ways, the most common of them, embroidery. A few archaeological and written monuments indicate that our ancestors learned embroidering long time ago. Samples found in the Pazurik Barrow in Altai and in the Bishatir Barrows in Semirechia date back to the 5th to 7th centuries BC. There is a very large number of embroidery techniques. Tambour stitching should be mentioned first. It is also called loop sewing. Also, we should mention satin stitch embroidery. Very often, these two techniques were combined in one piece. These are the basic techniques. The same satin stitch embroidery has a very large number of options. It can be an ordinary satin stitching. It can be a satin stitching on a smooth surface with a flooring, a bulky surface. It can be a satin stitching with a fastener. When the thread goes on the front side and along the edges of the pattern and is fixed by fastening with other stitches. The word keste, keste, kashta, embroidery, has ancient Iranian origins and means painted. In Noin Uling's burial mounds, northern Mongolia, leather boots richly embroidered with multicolored silk threads with a tambour seam were found. These are embroideries of Hunnish origin, especially two draperies which are believed to be Uinchi or Usun work. These tribes lived in antiquity in the areas of Semirechia and eastern Kazakhstan, and most likely they spread the art of embroidery among nomadic tribes of the steppe. Central Asia, in particular Uzbekistan, is a center of the gold embroidery culture. That is, the varieties of gold thread embroidery crocketing. One piece could combine embroidery with crocketing and embroidery with silk and other materials. For example, in museums, we can see samples of different embroideries, where besides the techniques already indicated by me, the variants of embroidery with beads, pawns, with a cord, which was sewn onto the fabric, are combined. Luxurious embroidery with golden threads, zuleo, is the art of the highest standard only representatives of the nobility, Hans, B, sultans could afford such an embroidery. It is known that Khoja Akhmiya Gisavi's tome bedspread was embroidered with Zileo technique. Designer Aijan Abdubayt, one of the few people who now revives this skill of Kazakh masters, participated in the reconstruction of this shrine. 
Not so long ago, not Hans, not rulers, but young famous singer Dimash Kudaibergenov flashed to the whole world, striking not only with his vocal abilities, but also with gold embroidery national costumes. In nomad culture, only females have been very engaged in embroidery. During the Betasha ritual, when the young bride was introduced to the husband's relatives, the groom handed the needle to the bride so that everyone could see her sewing skills. Embroidered silk handkerchief, Kesteli Oramal, a girl gifted to Jigit, young man, served as a declaration of love. In ancient times, if a girl liked the boy, she gave her silk handkerchiefs to him. This was so-called embroidered message replacement of modern phones. And then they met at Alta Bakan, a swing. Kazakhs decorated suede dressing gowns and embroidery, jargak and chapan, trousers and bags. Imported materials such as velvet, cloth, flannel, corduroy, chins were used for decorative embroidery. The material for embroidery was silk, woolen, cotton threads, as well as gold and silver threads. The pieces were often sewn with silver stamped plaques, Stripes of the pendant and a rim with sable, marten and otter fur was used in particularly rich decorative embroidery. Look at Kazakh pants, shalbar, made of leather or suede with beautiful silk embroidery. A lot of hard work was put into the piece, as leather processing is very difficult. There was also no margin for error for masters, as when you puncture leather, there is a mark left. Masters were so skillful and talented. They created such beautiful, complex, ornamental and multicolored compositions by themselves, without coping from anywhere. Their works were the result of their creativity based on existing canons of embroidery. In the house of modern Kazakhs, there may not always be items with national ornaments and embroidery, but one national thing can always be found in a true Kazakh's house, and it is Kura Korpe. Colorful blankets and bedspreads are able to bring native Kazakh flavor and revive cold electric of modern interiors. No matter how fashionable we are, we cannot abandon them, as Kura Korpe is a thing with a deep meaning. The cuts, the fabrics gifted at various ceremonial events, jirtus, pieces of cloth, which are distributed at the funeral of the elderly. All these were collected for years and Kura Korpe was sewn from these cloth to give to newlyweds. Thus, pieces of cloth sewn together, saturated with the positive energy of the giver, acquired a sacred meaning and was a wonderful gift. Korean feathers, English quilt, Australian patchwork, Kazakh kurok, different names of the same art of patchwork. Pieces of the multicolored fabrics of various geometric forms are joined to one piece products according to the principle of mosaic. The list of items that can be made is quite large. Covers, pillows, blankets, curtains, wardrobe items, and even fashion accessories. In North America, this technique had also spread due to an acute shortage of fabric, and the Japanese had worn the kimono this way. Kazakhs put deep meaning in patchwork sewing. They were motivated by the desire to unite separate pieces of cloth, charged with positive energy into a single whole. Patchwork technique Kura Korpe has its own composition, as on the carpet there is a main part called the central foot. The center is surrounded with water. However, the base patterns are geometric figures, triangles, squares, rhombus. Uniting all these and beautifully sewing a single composition is hard work. The 
The flap in traditional Kazakh culture has a large semantic load. Therefore, the clothes of the deceased man, if he was a strong and well-known person, were torn into pieces and amulets were made from them. Newborn's first shirt could also be made from these pieces of cloth. In addition, the headscarf of a mother with many children who lived long lives was torn into pieces. During wedding ceremonies held by the groom's side, the pieces of cloth were handed out to the guests. They were called jurtus and were kept as talismans. <laughs> If in someone's family, infant mortality was frequent, then the next born child was sewn clothes from different pieces of fabric, brought from various events, that is, cloth with good energy, so that the cloth saved the child from the blink. People believe that this way, it was possible to interrupt the cycle of misfortunes and losses in the family. Patchwork was an obligatory thing in a dowry of a young girl. It was associated with the notion of a strong, firmly stitched family. Kurok today is used not only in jasau, dowry, but also in clothing, accessories, interior details, even in the visual arts. In Rustem Abdrashev's film Kurok Korpe, different stories stitched together as rags in one blanket reproduce modern reality. Patchwork was a must in a girl's dowry. When two different people from different families create an alliance, it is very difficult to get used to each other. Therefore, Kurok carried a magical connecting function. Nomads had an ancient belief that Kurok Korpe is a powerful amulet. Our ancestors believed that the multicolored, beautiful Korpe bedspread takes away the evil from the owners of the house and protect them from negativity. Now, triangles can be found on all jewelry, on earrings, necklaces, etc. However, initially it was a symbol, an amulet against the evil eye and most often used in home textiles. For example, when a guest comes, he is amazed and praises the house, its decorations. It was believed that this way people could inadvertently jinx the house. Not only Kazakhs, but also the inhabitants of Turek-speaking countries had such a belief. That is why guests were obligatorily seated on Kurok Korpe with triangular pattern. If before the patchwork technique was used mainly for textiles, now it has also stepped into the fashion industry. This method is especially in demand in a modern ethno suit. Today, our fashionistas wear this interpretation of Kurok Korpe with pleasure. Sewing Kurak Korpe is an infinite idea. You can sew a modern linen cloth, for example, and sew Kurak Korpe there, and then this modern cloth becomes Kazakh, with our symbol that reminds us of our culture. Nowadays, in our bazaars, one can find different blankets, bedspreads, and other products made with kurok, patchwork. We decided to adapt our things to a modern interior so that they fit in and do not stand out and look too authentic. So that they fit into different modern interior styles, from classics to modern lofts or minimalism, but also with a Kazakh twist. Everyone knows the phrase, fashion comes and goes, but style remains. We just want to add that details create style, whether it will be a Kazakh ornament on the sleeves of a dress, accessories sewn in a scrappy technique, or a richly decorated embroidered shirt. By choosing a style, you broadcast the message to the world. And that is exactly what our ancestors did hundreds of years ago.